Dean, Mr. President, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. As we learned today, Marina came, Marina, right, to our club because she wanted to see what we're doing here and perhaps have some fun. Am I correct? No, no, no. Yeah, of course I'm joking, yeah. And if I'm correct, the person sitting right behind Marina is a newcomer for the first time in the club as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Why did you come for, to our club? What do you want to from it? Study English. You want to study and practice your English yeah. in the club, right? Well, regarding myself, I came to Moscow free speakers four years ago to practice my English as well. And it was natural. I understood, I understand why new people, not very experienced in public speaking, not willing to practice the English, come to the club. But there was one question that was very interesting. Why experienced people, professional speakers, business trainers, very experienced speakers, come to our club? What do they receive from our club? To give you a couple of examples, Serge Kuzin is a professional business trainer. For some mysterious for me reason, he was coming to our club on a regular basis. There was a guest from the United States, a professional speaker who is a regular Toastmaster. And I approached them and asked them, what are your reasons? They told me that what they value about Toastmasters is feedback they receive. It is very, very difficult to receive direct, constructive feedback from people they teach, from people they deliver their speeches before. They are probably in awe and too impressed with them all the time and can't provide constructive feedback to them. Of course, feedback is useful not only for experienced speakers, but for anyone as well. Naturally, when you receive constructive feedback, you become a better speaker because you can return, work on it, what you did wrong according to the value here, and improve. I also think that not so explicitly, you learn to receive critical feedback calmly. It is important. It's funny to look at my colleagues at work when somebody criticizes them. The first natural reaction to criticism is defending yourself. Well, it's not my fault, I feel ill, my children are ill, why do you attack me, you don't like me anymore, things like that. It looks really funny when you spend some time in Toastmasters. You can learn how to receive feedback as well. Well, it's also very useful to learn how to give feedback because it helps you to think clearer, to be able to approach a person about an issue directly and not being offensive. And as Simon said, when you are a mentor and teach people something you know how to do, you start understanding it even more deeply. The same goes for speeches as well. When you evaluate speeches, when I went through my company communication manual, I have to confess, it, wasn't, it was not all, almost always the case when I read very carefully the objectives and the theory in the project. I just thought, well, well okay, 10 projects, I want to say something about bicycles. Well, nine, four, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know my time limits. doesn't matter what are the objectives. But when you evaluate people, you, at least I, I do my homework and I read the manuals carefully. And I started really learning the theory when I started evaluating people on a regular basis. The club on the whole needs a lot of good, strong personal evaluators. And as I learned, and I I believe I evaluated closely about 50 speeches in my years in Toastmasters. It's not very easy to be an effective evaluator. And it took me, I don't know, about 30, 35 evaluations to start learning how to do it well enough. And I'm not even sure 
that I'm doing it well enough at the moment. It's not very easy. It's, it was not perhaps a mere coincidence that in 2013, Andrea and I evaluated about 30 species between ourselves. Sometimes we were the only evaluators at the meeting. Sometimes Andre evaluated two people and I evaluated one person. Other times I evaluated two people and they evaluated one person. We have other good evaluators as well, but we don't have as many as we would love to. So thus my objectives. This seminar today we have today. The seminar will be about how can you be an effective personal evaluator? Who am I to teach you? Well, I have already told you that I evaluated many people and I served as the chief judge a couple of times in speech contests and as a judge, as a, as a regular judge at speech contests too. I have some experience to share. Regarding how we go about our seminar today, if I will be only speaking about the theory, you will be probably asleep in the middle of my seminar. So thus, we'll have two parts, active part and theoretical part. In the first part, active part, it will be ideal if everybody in the audience will be involved. We'll divide the audience into four teams, and I'll ask you to do two things, a representative of, of the team. First, I'll ask you to collaborate within the, within, within the teams and discuss what are you going to say about speakers. First we'll have you evaluating Victor's speech and then we'll have another person evaluating Simon's speech and then we'll have people evaluating them, evaluators. I think it will be fun to do. And then I will share the principles and tips I developed through my experience as a personal evaluator. The reason why I chose to do the practice first and the theory second is that in my experience it is easier to listen, to read or listen to some theory when you have experience already, real life experience. <coughs> and secondly, perhaps during our practical part we will be able to develop naturally some of the principles I will be talking about later. Well, I guess we are about to start the practical part. I had to change something about the division of the audience into teams. So, regarding the teams, People sitting at the first, at the second, and at the third desk are the members of the first team. People sitting at the fourth and the fifth desk, and two of you, our newcomers, will be the second team. People here, from Henry to Simon, will be the third team. And people sitting, including Nicholas will be the fourth team. The rules are on the screen, but nevertheless I will repeat them, just in case. You have two minutes to discuss the speeches. The first team evaluates... No, not the first team, but the second team evaluates Victor's speech. And the fourth team discusses Simon's speech. Your goal in these two teams Begin a brainstorm and collect points that your representative of the second and the fourth team respectively will come to the stage and report. The representative will have two minutes as well. Is everything clear? Do you have any questions? The second team. The second. Could the second team? Could you please raise your hands? Don't be shy, don't be shy. Great. The fourth team, could you please raise your hands? The second team discusses for two minutes what they have to evaluate, what points 
of evaluation they made about victim speech, the fourth team discusses what pains of evaluation they made about Simon's speech. Go on. And what about us? Time. Time is up. Time is up. The team members of the second and the fourth team. Now it's about time you choose a representative of your respective teams. And the preferences, the second team. And the preference is it would be ideal if your representative will be a new member who has delivered up to five speeches. If not a new member, then a newcomer. If not a newcomer, then an experienced member. The experienced member, an experienced member goes last. The second team, who will be a representative of your team? Mikhail Feritonov, right? Yes. The fourth team, who? Nikos Ivanov. Awesome. The second team evaluates Simon's speech, and the fourth team evaluates. Why is we evaluate? Simon's speech. Yes. Then yes. Simon. I already. Awesome, awesome. Uh, the second team evaluates Victor's speech and the fourth speech uh, team evaluates Simon's speech. Mikhail, you're welcome to the stage. On the stage. You have two minutes as well, and I will cut you when two minutes is up. It never been evaluated, so it will come. First try. I will go through the objectives. Oh, wait a second. Wait. I'm very sorry. Now it becomes interesting. The first team evaluates Mikhail's evaluation. <laughs> and the third right. And the third team evaluates Nicholas's evaluation. Please go on. First objective of Victor was to pursue at least an start job the viewpoints or ideas or to take some actions. I think his idea was great to persuade people to read classic English literature. It's an aim which don't need mass some big persuasion or and many people read the classics but my opinion is that hadn't addressed the audience right because he was reading text and many people were bored weren't listening him so persuasion persuasion wasn't continued this target wasn't completed thought fully maybe some halfway the second objective was to appeal, appeal to the audience interest. How to, you can appeal? I think you can ask audience a few questions. You can make them interesting in what you will answer to them. And Victor decided that he knows what we want and what we need. And so I think that he had to, he hadn't achieved this objective. I can't evaluate the third ob objective right because I am a new speaker to use logic and emotion to support your position. I think it was a good logic to read a text, a good classic okay, logic. I'm sorry. I don't have any time. Thank you. A representative for the fourth team. Thank you very much, Dennis. Speaking from the name of our fourth team, I would like to begin with a perfect eye contact. Um, it was proposed uh, by Natalia Terzi, and uh, telling the truth, I absolutely agree with this idea. Even sitting here, I could feel that silence sometimes applies to me, and uh, also keeping the conversation with me as well. It was brilliant. But then we have 
uh, several points that actually underlines disadvantages of your speech. And uh, the first of these disadvantages, to our opinion, is the conclusion. For our team, it was not as clear and as distinct as it probably is supposed to be. It can be arguable, but uh, we agree on it. Uh, the second point is too detailed explanation. Actually, you had a lot of slides, but the whole idea was one that there is a mentoring program, there is a mentor and mentee, and then and they should work together. So it was clear, at least for me, from the very beginning, what your speech is about and what we should do, but you added a lot of details which made uh, your speech maybe too complicated. What we can suggest for you is to use more examples to make your presentation more vivid and more evident. Also, we didn't see any jokes, any expressions in your speech. You could highlight several points by, by making people laugh, right? And you were like uh, going on a steady level, you were just uh, uh, expressing uh, the, the whole idea without anything really interesting. No now it's time for a short tea break for the second and fourth teams and time to work for the first and the third team respectively. Now first and the third team, discuss among yourselves what do you want, what points you made, points of evaluation you made about the evaluation of Mikhail and Nicholas respectively and then choose a representative according to the preferences, which are, first, non-experienced member. If not a non-experienced member, a newcomer. If not a newcomer, experienced member. The third team doesn't have non-experienced members and newcomers among them. So I guess they will have to choose experience. You have two minutes to discuss what you have about the evaluators. Thank 
you for participation. That's about time to tell you about something I devised for myself as guiding principles and my tips for you, especially for beginners, personal values, beginners, personal values. As you may find in the title of my project, my principles are appropriate, um, specific, fair, firm, and no sandwiches. Let's address the first point, appropriate. What do I mean by that? I also used the phrase between needless praise and useless, no, useless praise and needless cruelty. What do I mean by that? <laughs> there are different types of speakers, and different types of speakers need different types of feedback. You can always find many things to criticize about beginning speakers. And of course it's very easy to praise, sing praise to experienced speakers. But as a very interesting scientific article, tell me what I did wrong, experts seek and respond to negative feedback, says it is actually the fact or close to the close to the fact that experts these kind of people seek for this kind of feedback. <laughs> if you start saying, for example, if you come to the station and say, Simon, you have wonderful English. Your eye contact is absolutely great. And you're such a nice person. And your short is beautiful. Thank you for such a nice speech. This is something that is probably can be classified as useless praise. You said many pleasant things, two general things to, to him, and he's not very interested. Are you interested in such kind of feedback? On the other hand, if, say, Mikhail, as a first time personal evaluator, comes to the stage, and an experienced personal evaluator comes out and says, well, what do I start with? Your eye contact is terrible. Why are you stammering all the time? Why do you look so inconfident? Are you a disabled speaker? Are you? What did you, what did you come for to the club? Well, there's almost nothing good about, about your speech. This is something that can be classified as needless cruelty. You concentrate too much on negative sides of his performance, first time performance. Um, whereas, according to the article, which you can find on the internet and read, beginners need mostly positive feedback. Because if you give them too much negative feedback, their motivation goes down. They are not motivated to do the thing. The second part of appropriate principle is keep to technical details. Both, I believe, both evaluators, Mikhail and Nicholas, gave us some details, technical details. But at least, it's not very often today, but there, were, there was time when some person evaluators take the stage and say something like that. Well, Victor told us about a very interesting book by Sheridan. And I want to tell you about an interesting book I read. It was called War and Peace. It was so interesting. Leo Tolstoy was such a great writer. I was so... And I also like movies a lot, believe it or not. I like sports. Your speech was good. Thank you very much. Well, keep to technical details. Don't talk about other things. Regarding my second point, specific, or rather second principle, specific, what I mean, be specific. When you criticize something, don't tell you to Mikhail, for example. And Mikhail, I'm not telling about your actual 
areas of attention for you. Let's put it this way. If you tell Mikhail, your body language is bad, your vocal variety is bad, your structure is bad, you don't look good, you don't look bright, and things like that, it's not, it's too general. If you say your body language is bad, tell what exactly was bad about his body language. And don't stop there. Give him suggestions as well. 